haven't met you yet, I'm Jocelyn. And uh, I'm not a priest, but I wear this thing called a tippet because I'm preaching. I'm preaching. Sometimes I use words to preach, and sometimes I invite you to contemplate because it has been a rich tradition of spirituality for me that I want to share with you. Close your eyes. Or head step if that's too scary. Use your hand to not pay attention to me, but to listen. If you need to fidget, fidget. Please stay still, stay still. But you are listening to the invitation. What if you were there? Can you place yourself in that story? Can you pretend you're Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, or the leader of St. Paul's, or the leader of your fill in the blank? Can you pretend you are this person who then says, my child is dying? Literally, if you pretend, and do not say it out loud, but what are you feeling? What do you want? You are Jairus, a leader of your community, and your child is dying. Continue to breathe, pay attention to your thoughts and throw them out the window and pay attention to your feeling. How are you feeling with this death that is on your doorstep? I'm going to pause you there because death sometimes is scary, but Jesus says, do not fear but believe. Believe that there is something after death. Just for a moment. So you're there. Now go ahead and if you have to wiggle it out, wiggle out that story just a little bit. Wiggle out that story. If it persists in you, I would say that's God's invitation. Stay with it. But perhaps Jairus didn't get your imagination. What about, what about if you were the hemorrhaging woman? What about if you were a woman who has been in pain and suffering, or maybe not pain and suffering, but it's, but it's kind of obvious to everybody? that you're in pain and suffering. Or, back then, you weren't a part of the community. That you were exiled. You were separated. You were estranged. You were not in the in-group, as they like to say in school. What if you were that person? If I could only touch this book, what, what, what are you saying? What, what, what is, what does this emotion, what is the emotion that you feel when for 12 years you have been outcast? What does that pain, how does that pain inform you and how you make friends or trust people, let alone trust God? Okay, this is a lot, Larson. So go ahead and just take a deep breath. Please don't open your eyes. Or just adjust in a chair. Just adjust in a chair. I invite you to just, when you go home from this place, take the well of this community that we can do that reflection and hold that tenderly with each other. When we do it alone, it's scary. And it's too much sometimes. But when we gather here or on Zoom or on Facebook, we can hold the complexity of how hard it is to live and to be on the brink of death. Because we don't know what's going on. I come here because I need your faith to save me. And not in some, you know, white culture saving me, the Filipino woman. <laughs> it's more like, I come because I want to hear from you. I want to reading right now, like it's just there. Thank you. Thank you, Bill <laughs> and Andrea, for just stepping up. 
But that's what we do in community. We just step in to whatever is needed half the time. Half the time, we don't even think about it. Thanks, David, for doing her something. Thanks, Michael, for just snowing in when Susan is not here. Thanks, Jen, for just wiggling up a rector. Thanks for being our interim. Thanks, ladies, for just coming across and maybe putting on some rainbow headbands. Did Jen make you do that? Uh, <laughs> because we're kind with each other. We're kind in community with each other. Because we know that we have gifts and we know we have deficits. That none of us are perfect. And many of us are actually in pain. Last year when we did the Pride, Pride Sunday or Pride Sermon, it was really great because anytime I have a platform, I want to share that with people. Because pride is not just about one person's experience of identifying as gay or a minority sexuality. It's not just about one person. It's actually a story about community and how community fulfills God's promise, God's eternal promise of this image that we are all made in God's image, literally all, not just singular versions of us, all of us, and we need all of us to be in this place. So you might have lots of different versions of this sermon, and Anne will laugh because she has accompanied me in this walk of what are you going to say, what are you going to say, what are you going to say? And I love it because it's not what I'm going to say, it's actually what the Spirit is inviting us to. To be this temple in that opening prayer that we accept ourselves, we accept one another, and just not accept, but heal and invite in and say, we are community, you are healed, is a weird phrase. Jesus didn't do any healing. Jesus invited and confirmed and blessed and recognized and showed up. Go home, take a look at the gospel, just look at all the verbs. He went he listened to the way I'm not going to lie, Jesus was a little unprepared. He's like, who touched me? Because we know that Jesus has power, but do you know that you have power? I love this because most of the time I like to be in the shadows. It's comfortable for me. Maybe because I'm gay. Maybe because of other churches have said, not here. Maybe because I'm 5'2", and it just needs to die. <laughs> Maybe because, you know, as a Filipino being raised in the San Francisco area, like, like, maybe all these things about me. But I think that when I step into community, God is calling forth a truth that only we can recognize with one another. And so I wonder what it is for you. As you are being called forth to come to in-person, or to come and watch a video, or to come and bring coffee, or to come and answer a phone call from someone, what is being called out of you that literally could not exist unless you were in relationship with someone who needed something? In the second letter of the Corinthians, right? Yeah, well, in your abundance, make sure then that the people who need something are cared for. That'll be fair. That'll be balanced. But again, if you take a look at that reading, that second line continues to say, For it is in your need, when you need, there is somebody else that will have that abundance, that abundance to suffer with you, that abundance to listen to you, that abundance to say, you're not just the color of your skin, that abundance says you're not just who you broke up with. And that is the solidarity that we are all invited to in this kingdom of God or this kingdom of God or the beloved community. And so, because today marks the fact that we can sing in person as well, so 
so many songs come through, raging through my body and in my mind. Um, I see a lot of teenagers here, and um, I'm going to totally embarrass myself right now. I've been trying to learn Justin Bieber's song, Holy, for like the last like week and a half, because it's so powerful. Um, and I'm not going to get it right, but I love it because he sings Holy, 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 holy. Love is holy, 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 holy. Something like that. Oh, God! And then he wraps this thing again. I'm not great at it, but oh, God! Run into the altar like a trespasser. Can't wait another second. Because your love is holy, 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 holy. So maybe there's something there for you. Maybe there's not. Um, it is Pride Sunday, and I would be remiss to miss out on an opportunity to share Holly Weir's song. Um, she wrote it in the car on her way to um, a candlelight something of togetherness and pain and sorrow when they stole me a former mayor in San Francisco. And, um, and Harvey Milk got assassinated. She wrote a couple verses, scribbled it down, I'm just going to ask, you don't need to close your eyes, but again, we are a rich community. I'm going to ask Anthony Stiles just to kind of meet us. It may be easy for you to pick up and it may be naughty. That's okay. Sing it if you want to. Pray it if you need to. Please. We are young and old together, and we are the same. I see. 